You fucking people have been asking me to do a studio tour video for like 11 million and a half years now. You know, I actually never did a studio tour my whole seven years of being on YouTube.com. And I'm gonna just show behind the scenes what it takes to make one of these dumbass videos. I'm also gonna be making a beat around this time using all this equipment. Because I figured like, what's the point of showing all this shit without making a beat? Alright, so here's like what the studio looks like in its entirety. I actually never fucking showed my studio like in one fucking frame. All right, first things first is my fucking laptop. It's a fucking Toshiba satellite. When I don't know what you want me to say, it's just a fucking laptop, it works. Look, I don't really know too much about like the specs and shit. You're a fucking nerd and you actually care, here it is. By the way, I like to put a big ass book under my laptop because you see here's like a little air vent thing and it gets fucking hot and you don't want it on the surface especially now when it's on top of another piece of equipment like it is here all right the next thing is this fucking microphone which i'm actually using to record my voice right now it's called the bluebird blue i don't fucking know i mean it sounds good and it works so yeah i'll use it i'm about to give you guys some advice on how to be a better consumer if you buy a piece of equipment brand new like a microphone for example and they ask you if you want to get a warranty on it you don't get that shit because even if your microphone falls over and you break it by accident, then the warranty doesn't cover that. In most cases, the manufacturer should provide you with an intended warranty, which basically means when you buy the product, it should do what it's intended to do, like, you know, fucking record. So the next time you're at Guitar Center and the guy offers you a warranty, even if he looks like a nice guy, you look him right in the eyes and you tell him to shove that warranty up his fucking ass. You don't need that shit. He doesn't really care about you. He just wants your fucking money. You can get the warranty if you really want to. I'm just speaking from my experience. Alright, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is all this fucking shit right here. Alright, so the first piece of equipment is one that I use in pretty much every video. I mean, this thing is the fucking goat. This is the Roland Phantom X6. So why did I decide to go with this keyboard? Because my favorite producers of all time use it. Shardy Red, Evil Pimp, D Rich, and a bunch of other producers like Manny Fresh, Fat Boy, Zaytoven. Alright, I'm gonna demonstrate what are like some of the most iconic sounds from this keyboard, which I think... I know that you guys jokingly tell me to make like a really Mexican type of music, but if I really wanted to, I could because even they use this keyboard. This is pretty much like a huge ass sound library, you know, before people had VSTs like Nexus, they had to go out and buy a keyboard like this, which has all your synthesizers and acoustic sounds. So if you want to buy a Roland Phantom X6, you're gonna have to get it used because they discontinued the Phantom series. Let me share with you what I think are the three most fucking GOAT keyboards of all fucking time. The Roland Phantom, the Korg Kronos, and the Yamaha Motif. Alright, the next thing that we got down here is the motherfucking Nord rack which is actually the rack version of the nord lead this is actually the first piece of music fucking hardware that i ever purchased in my whole life i didn't even know what it did but i saw somebody use it and i thought it was cool and so i wanted to buy one and i fucking did apparently this thing was released in 1996 which is the year that i was born so this thing is as old as me which goes back to what i was telling you about the warranty this thing can last 21 fucking years that's fucking crazy this thing's taught me everything that i need to know about sound design for the most part getting a break from using vsts you know it's really great using it when you're super fucking high all right so the next piece we got is the dofer maq 16 3 dark edition 20 year fucking anniversary this thing right here is pretty much a sequencer which means it's kind of like the piano roll but it's like the piano roll on fucking crack it's super fucking crazy so crazy that i haven't even discovered like half of the fucking possibilities you can do on this shit but i'll show you guys a demonstration you just like tune these little things and then like you get a melody i'm gonna be using this to control the nord rack <laughs> 
yeah and this shit all the way down here this is like one of the first midi keyboards that i ever got the last keyboard that i got right here is the korg micro korg i mean i guess it's cool and all i kind of just use it as my midi controller you know since it's like small and i just use it for my left hand but i mean i don't really like the display it sucks ass if you can even call it a display you gotta go through all these menus i don't really like it i really like the nord though because just all the fucking knobs right in your face this one it just got like fucking four knobs and i gotta go through all these goddamn menus but i really like the design on this thing because this is the wooden age of synthesizers and here's the garbage that i use when i'm too lazy to go outside and use real garbage all right now it's time to talk about these fucking interfaces without these son of a bitches we wouldn't be able to connect any of these shits on the fl studio and this first one that i got over here chilling under my laptop is the focus right scarlet 18 i 20 or some shit let me tell you this is a fucking multi-track audio interface do you know what a fucking multi-track means here's some fucking producer advice if you don't know what this means if you were to buy a mixer like one of these that would be for live performances when you would mix everything on time and just fucking put it through one output but this multi-track audio interface is gonna allow you to in your DAW to select everyone individually the next interface that I have this is an audio interface this is a MIDI interface it's the MOTU MIDI Express basically what this does is if I press something on FL studio it's gonna communicate it to my keyboard it's gonna be like yo fucking press the key these are the headphones that i use for like mixing and shit i guess they're the audio technica athm 50s if you guys want some real advice on how to mix and shit just go on your db meter on fl studio that's what i've been doing a lot lately is just measuring it all out visually and here's the mouse that i use it's really fucking old and shitty but i'm really old and shitty all right and here are my gay disco lights you know having a little bit of shit in the background just kind of just inspires you a little bit all right and last but not least is the studio monitors these are the jbl lsr 308s which means they got a eight inch fucking cone i mean i guess they sound pretty good you guys know i don't really give a shit about mixing and mastering because i'm not a fucking audio engineer i'm just a fucking beat maker and here's the stands i don't know i mean i got on my guitar center hold up trap hold up trap all right that's basically it as far as my studio goes if you guys want a little bit more advice highly do not recommend that you put your studio up against the wall like this because look when you're gonna want to get your cables and shit you're gonna want to do some cable management you're not gonna be over here jerking off and doing all this gay shit you can just walk back here and look there's all your cables right in front of you and plus you can get all this space for your monitors yeah so that's what i recommend just keep some good space between you and the wall if you don't want to take my advice i don't give a fucking ass all right now i'm gonna make the beat that i said i was gonna make